This is my 2002 Silverado 6 liter. Uh, swapped into it. We're going to put a Wabro in it because we're going to be doing a 78-75 uh, millimeter turbo. Um, the fuel pump is weak anyway. It's a stock fuel pump. It's an AirTex. Don't get AirTex because they are garbage. But I'm going to show you how I'm going to put the Wabro in my stock sending unit. I did run a, a relay. You can buy the harnesses if you want. They're not too expensive, but I had all the parts, so I'm just going to do it myself. I'm going to try pulling the, the pin out of the ECM. And run it from there. Let's see. It's pulled power from this junction box. Fuse that is a 30 amp. Then we'll run a 10 gauge wire all the way to the back. Grounded the relay, the ECM is a positive 12 volts, I believe. So I'm gonna try doing it this way. If not, we'll splice into the fuse box. But I'd rather do it this way, It'd be a little cleaner. We just plug into the ECM. We'll go over that in a minute. But so far where I'm at, a little short on the wire. It comes out right, down right there. I need about three or four more feet, unfortunately. Might have enough, but I'm looking for a way to splice it. But anyway, we'll go over the fuel pump. You can figure out how to run a 10 gauge wire back here. So here is the stock sending unit, 99 through 03 return style. This is the Walbro 525, I believe it's the Hellcat one. I bought this, it looks like I got the right length, pretty damn close. This is a 10 mil on each end, and I think 300 millimeters long. So the factory doesn't even use clamps, that's cool. It came with Oedeker style clamps, but I don't have the crimper for them, so. Get this bucket tore apart, and uh, modify it and get this guy in there. So I don't know if it's all the pumps that are like this, but mine actually fits very well. That's the wall bro. You can see it's very similar to the factory one. I don't know what the hell that is. I don't know if that's the return or whatever regulator for that. I don't know. I was actually able to get the Oedeker clamps on there. You can kind of cheat and use some dull uh, wire cutters and use it to pinch. I'll show you real quick. Kind of pinch the sides. But like I said, I don't know if all the pump styles are like this. It's like really well. Uh, you probably could get away with a little bit shorter hose. This is a 300, maybe like a 250 or 280, or I don't know, somewhere around there, but it'll work. I think the factory one was long like that and kind of, you know, it's flexible. I cut out the two power wires out of the plug that goes here. These two are for your fuel level, so leave those. I'm going to also take them out of the harness up here on the truck because we don't want these sparking or anything in the tank. Uh, obviously that's not a good idea. So now this slides over top of this. We're going to cut a hole in the bottom for the sock. And the sock will sit obviously on the bottom of the tank. The factory ones I get drew from inside of here which to me doesn't seem like a good idea. Because if your pump outruns how fast this can suck fuel in, you're going to run lean, and that's never a good thing. So, Before I started hacking everything, I got a hole bit, or a uh, stepper drill bit. Open this up to 1 and 1 eighth. That's as high as it went. So I'm going to see if I can um, orientate the pump in here to where just that comes out. Um, probably have to take off, let's see how there's a step 1 nub. Preferably that one, maybe a little bit of that one. We'll see how the sock fits because it'll sit down on you know, the bottom of the tank, and that will be kind of like that. Yeah, so we'll see how it fits. Hopefully, that lined up. I kind of guessed. We'll see. So, it looks like you don't want to center it, you want to be off kind of to the side. So I'm going to have to cut a little bit. I got the die grinder. That shouldn't be too hard. That way the sock can fit underneath. Probably come off to the side a little bit. That way that little check valve 
can flow fuel easily. I don't even know why that's there, but it's all snapped together. And because the pump is like the same style, almost the same size, it doesn't come out. Naturally, with that sock in there pressing against the bottom of the tank, it's going to be just right. So that works out beautifully. Like I said, I don't know if the OEM pump looks like this because I threw mine away. This is so long ago. It was going out and I replaced it with, like I said, this Airtex. But it's actually turning out a lot better than I thought I was going to. I'm going to have to. I'm going to drill holes through here and just you know, silicone it, run the wire to this connector instead of having all the different connectors because the wire from here is very thin and uh, you just need the two wires for your fuel level but we'll get we'll get there when we get there first I'm gonna get the sock put on so I'm hoping you don't need that spring <laughs> it goes right there it goes in between these two pieces when you separate it but I got the sock put on I actually didn't have to cut any of those nubs off so I had to come out to the side a little bit because like I said the pump is offset that's it that's how she's gonna go in there super clean I like that ah, I sh actually I do have to take it back apart damn it because that has to go on and it doesn't clear this I gotta pull the sock back off hold on I take that back I did not have to so that's the plug goes So that's the way it's going to sit. Go to the truck real quick. So it looks like these two have to figure out, I believe, on the truck. Here's the figure out which one is the power wire and which one is the ground. I'm going to run my own ground probably, probably just drill right here and uh, put a ring terminal on it and just ground it right there, paint it so it doesn't rust or nothing. And then like I said, we're going to have to extend the power wire a little bit. We're getting pretty close though, but like I said, I'm going to look up real quick, see which one's the power so we can disconnect it. That way we don't have anything going to the tank other than the, our own power wire, which I have right here. So there is a gray wire, light gray. That is the power. It's the thickest one over here. Um, leave the ground on here. I said this power, right? So leave the ground on here. That way, if you know, God forbid anything happened to the tank, it is grounded, so it's not gonna arc or anything. It has a path to ground. But this, we're gonna clip it back. I'm gonna put a heat shrink over it, shrink it and roll it back over, and then put some of this heat shrink over it and shrink that, that way. Now there's no way it's going to touch anything. Same with this. Um, that shouldn't have any power. That is what usually feeds the pump, but same thing. We're not gonna leave any wires exposed. We're gonna just tuck everything back and we can work on getting the pump in the tank. I'll leave the link to this pump, the install kit I used. Um, and then I, I guess the random relays and stuff I used to wire it. But anyway, this is ready to go in and uh, with this sock on, when it sits on the bottom of the tank, it's pressed down. It pushes up against the bottom where I fed it through the top. So this thing's ready to go. We'll put it in real quick. All right, so the pump is all in. I ended up drilling through there anyway. Um, not crazy about it, but really I think that's the best way to get your full gauge, whatever is it, 8, 10, whatever you end up running, 12 through there. I silicone it to let it sit. I did test the pump before I closed everything up, made sure the hose inside was not leaking. It's good, so plug that back in. Grounded it. Here, in hindsight, I probably would not have. It's kind of a stress point. I mean, I guess it is kind of braced right here, but we will probably put it somewhere else. But anyway, there it is. So the computer connector's taken off. It's red, oh, there we go. Red nine, open this up. On the back of these, they're like, they're like cast into it. There's numbers. Pull the factory one out. And I'll just tuck it up underneath of this cover thing. Put a piece of tape over it so it doesn't touch anything. Um, we'll cover this up with something else. But now we're gonna put it all back together. Here's a cover for it. 
and then uh, see if the truck runs. Alright, let's see. We got pressure for one. So it slowly bleeds off, but let's see. I don't know if it caught any of that. Okay, it is the next morning. I messed with this thing all night. You can see. I got the gauges out because I got new needles for it, but uh, they didn't fit, so they're getting sent back, and I'm getting ones that I know will fit. But that's uh, a different day and a different video. So it's got a new fuel pump, a manual fuel pressure regulator, so it's not like the fuel pressure regulator on the rail is bad, it doesn't even have one. Um, fuel filter is like a year old, and I never drive this, so it's not like it's plugged up. Um, only thing I can think is that in the tune for these trucks, there is a setting. I don't know a lot about tuning. I know there's things you can change and things you're supposed to change. Um, the tuner said he did switch it over from a vacuum reference to you know, like the newer trucks that don't have the regulators, the pump just builds 58 PSI. Um, you can change that in the tune. He said he did, but maybe he didn't because it, it messes with the injectors, the flow rates, how that starts. Um, maybe you just need to see it in person because that's the only thing I can figure. I swapped out the uh, oxygen sensors last night um, on the LS swapped Yukon, made no difference. Spark plugs, they were new last summer. Uh, spark plug wires, same thing. Um, swapped out coil packs, nothing made a difference. So um, it needed to be swapped out regardless because the factory pump was not going. It was already maxed out when I had it uh, tuned. The previous shop, I maxed out the 8.1 injectors, and the fuel pump would have been next. If I put bigger injectors in it, it would have only went so far. And especially with the turbo coming in, um, or the turbo that I'm putting in, it's definitely going to need more fuel. So we got the Walbro 525. I guess it's the Hellcat one. Um, I'll leave a link to that in the, in the description, the install kit I bought, um, the hose, all that stuff. Um, hopefully we can get this starting issue figured out. And once it runs, it's fine. It's no big deal, but it needs to start first try. It's a good thing I got this guy. So I do have check engine light. It's probably a misfire. Cause it runs like garbage while it's starting yeah misfire detected because it runs like crap when i first start it you can tell it's misfiring until it clears up i originally thought it was because the pump was just weak but i know that the wall is not weak so just needs to be taken down and tuned in person i guess all right so that's how i put the uh wall 525 uh, fuel pump in my 2002 should be the same through 99 through 03 04 is when they went to returnless so I'm like like I said earlier I'm not sure if the OEM pump is the same style but if you have an air tax it fits pretty damn well like it was made to go there so stay tuned we got more stuff coming like I said we're putting a turbo on this thing I got a six liter I'm this already has a 6 liter, but I'm building a 6 liter for boost. This one has high compression. This will go in something else, but stay tuned.